caught my wife banging her ex after I installed hidden cameras. Now as I'm divorcing her, she's begging for another chance. Hey everyone, I know that the title may sound confusing without the background that I am about to give. So ever since COVID started my wife has been working from home. My job never let us do that so I have still been driving to work every day. She has a friend that she occasionally hangs out with. He's been invited to hang out with both of us before too. He's nice, fun to hang around and pretty cool. I've had no problem with this. My wife made me aware pretty early on that she dated him in high school. She said that they dated their freshman and sophomore year. They never had sex but did mess around. They started reconnecting as friends during their senior year. At that time he had a girlfriend and she was starting to see another guy as well. She claims that after they broke up there was never anything romantic between them again. When COVID started my wife said that she would be able to work from home. I was glad and happy for her as I knew it'd be easier, and even save gas. She said that her friend was going to be able to work from home too so they may meet up sometimes to go over their work and help each other, they both work in a similar field. One day I came home and noticed that he was there. I thought nothing of it really as my wife had told me about this. They both had their computers and like they were working pretty hard. For a while it was like this. Suddenly a few weeks and I would come home and they would casually be hanging out and having fun. Sometimes they would be playing a game. Sometimes they would be drinking. Sometimes they would be eating. I started finding this a little bit weird. It seemed as though he was getting more attention than me and that she was having a better time with him than me. Then one day when I came home it was the final straw. They were both on the couch and her head was in his lap while they were watching TV. I waited until he left and then had a talk with her. I was fuming. I yelled at her and told her that their actions have been unacceptable and that there's no reason that she should be laying with a friend like that. I expressed how I felt like she has been showing him more attention than her husband and that it seemed like they were having more fun together than we do. Not to mention that they had dated before and fooled around. She got really upset and said I had no right to tell her that she can no longer hang around someone. She was mad that I seemed to claim that she was cheating on me with him and swore that she was not and would not do that. She said that all they were doing was relaxing and that it was not wrong to lay her head on his lap. The last two days he has not been at the house when I got home. She says that she has not seen him since our talk. I apologize for being so angry about it. She doesn't seem like she has really accepted my apology as she has been really quite around me ever since. How do I make things better? Is she cheating? How do I handle things between her and this friend? TLDR I told my wife I no longer want her hanging around the house with her ex-boyfriend from high school. Relevant comments. I agree with you. When you said they had computers out and were working hard I felt it seemed innocent enough. However a woman putting her head in some guy's lap. No no no. Boundaries are being crossed. It is not appropriate and she knows it. Would she be okay if the situation was reversed? Thank you. I don't like how everyone is automatically saying that it's wrong that the guy is over there in the first place. Sure it's weird that they dated, but that was very many years ago. I had no problem when they were working, but what they did was taking it too far. That's not okay, she's not respecting your relationship. Her head shouldn't be in his lap at all, and it should make you uncomfortable since they used to have a relationship. If the roles were reversed and you had a ex's head in your lap, she would also be uncomfortable. Her getting mad at you for questioning it is gaslighting to the situation and you. I wouldn't put my head in guy's lap if I didn't feel some type of chemistry. It's definitely flirty. I think you guys need to discuss boundaries. It's important that you guys agree on what you consider to be okay and not okay. If she thinks that type of behavior with an ex is acceptable, and you don't then things may not work. I would see where things go and what she does next. Her actions will speak louder than words. If these situations keep occurring though it may be time to rethink if this is someone you want to be with. I realize that I may have yelled at her too much and too quickly. I should have discussed the boundaries first. She may think it's completely okay to lay her head in his lap. Well it does seem quite inappropriate to be drinking and chilling on the couch. Eating and stuff like that seems fine but chilling with her head on his lap seems bordering on very inappropriate. Remember they are supposed to be working. I can understand they distress by eating dinner and even watching TV or whatever. That said, is this happening pretty much every day? Or just happened once or twice? Either way you need to have a serious talk with her. Sit her down and talk about boundaries rather than making demands of her not seeing the friend. It is bad to deny her a friend in the way that it sounds like you did but your feelings are valid here. I don't know how trust can be regained here but if I were her I would have tried to find a way to reassure you rather than be combative. This is a situation where I think you have cause for concern but it may still be fairly innocent. So it's tricky and without a good proper heart to heart talk with her this will grow resentment. It may be a good idea to request from her that you be allowed to see their communication, texts, Facebook, 
Instagram. Important here that you don't demand to keep continuous eye on her phone. Just have her unlock her phone in full view of you so you can get some reassurance with this guy. If she reacts strongly to this I think you have your answer and it's time to take this as a serious threat to your marriage. You need to proceed delicately but you deserve and need this to be resolved otherwise suspicion with grow, and with that comes resentment. It happened at least twice a week. The other times they'd actually be working or he was already gone. I didn't mention it in the post but I already did check her phone shortly after our fight. I didn't see anything flirty between them. Update, so last week I posted here about my wife spending time at our house with an old ex that she used to have from high school. He had been coming over and working from home with her ever since COVID started. At first I thought nothing of it as they were just simply helping each other with their work. Then they started to hang out and stuff more. When I caught her laying down with her head in his lap I had enough. I told her he could no longer come over. She was mad and took offense to this but agreed. Most people here agreed with me that it was sketchy for her to do this. I was made aware that he could still be coming over during the day and leaving before I get there. I ended up buying a camera that I could set up and hide while I am at work. I put one in the living room and one in the bedroom. The first day they were set up I saw nothing unusual. The second day was when it happened. The ex came over. At first they were just working, but then he started to get pretty touchy with her. It progressed until they needed up going to our bedroom and sleeping together. I was shocked. I wasn't sure what to do. As soon as I saw my wife again I questioned her if she had been seeing him anymore. She denied it. I told her that I had cameras installed in the house. Her face changed completely then. She knew what I had seen. She immediately started crying. I told her to leave the house. She tried to apologize and explain but I wasn't having any of it. Since then we have talked to each other once. I told her that I don't see how anything can happen besides a divorce. She said she doesn't want that and asked if I would go to couples counseling one time before making that final decision. I reluctantly agreed. I don't expect it to work and I'm mainly doing it to humor her. I'm still looking and trying to contact divorce attorneys as I'm typing this. TLDR I figured out my wife has been sleeping with her high school ex while they are working from home. Comments, first of all, get tested for STDs. Her friend might not be exclusive with your wife. Secondly, so sorry about the demise of your marriage. Because even if you go to counseling and decide not to divorce her, the marriage is over. It was over the first time she broke her vow to you to forsake all others. Now you know she's an unfaithful deceitful liar that can look right into your face and demand apologies from you for having perfectly normal suspicions. How could you ever trust her again? Keep looking for that lawyer. You know the most annoying thing what she said that we should go couples counseling she is the seahorse that cheated. Not you, she is one that lied, not you. There is no coming back from that and who knows how long it's been going for. Why does she insist on staying when she wants to F somebody else? Cheaters. I'm sure it's because she wants me to go and then them guilt me into thinking that it was partly my fault that she cheated. Story 2. This literally happened this morning. I'm posting it here and hoping to vent and maybe get some perspective because I've been extremely upset all day and can't process this productively. My wife is 8 months pregnant with our child. We live next to another married couple who are in their late 30s. I don't like the guy. I've found him to be invasive and the weird type of friendly that almost seems to be prying and clingy. I'm not sure if that's clouding my judgment here or if this validated my beliefs about him. I left for work, decided on the way there I just wasn't feeling it and called off. I stopped for breakfast before heading home to surprise my wife. 40 minutes tops. I get home, enter from the back door and here's my wife and my neighbor sitting in our living room on the couch. She's turned toward him, fully clothed but with her shirt pulled up over her very pregnant stomach while he, facing her, is rubbing lotion on her stomach with both hands. They both froze, before my wife asked how come I was back and then said, his name, stopped by to borrow the toolbox while I was moisturizing and wanted to know if he could feel the baby so I said okay. I told him to get out before I put him out, and he left immediately. I tried to stay calm and talk to her and get the whole story. Neighbor's wife is apparently infertile. First I heard of it which is amazing considering the guy never shuts up about his personal woes, and he wanted to feel the baby. That's her story and she's sticking to it. That's not good enough for me. My thought process is there's a big effing difference between feeling a baby for 10 seconds and coming into our home and rubbing lotion on my wife's stomach. If it was some close friend of ours I might understand. But I dislike the guy and my wife has never expressed any sort of closeness to him aside from passing pleasantries. And she's not the type to let anyone she isn't close to put their hands on her. So in the span on a day the guy goes from being a distant acquaintance of hers at best to her deciding to invite him in and let him rub her. I also find it convenient that he showed up that early, right after I went to work. Very shortly after his own wife also left for work. 
and he's never came over asking to borrow anything of mine before. Yet 9.30ish in the morning and he urgently needs a toolbox. I don't believe my wife. This is the first time my trust in her hasn't been strong enough. I don't believe her story because it makes no sense. When I told her I'd be mentioning this to his wife, she was adamant I don't, as not to make more of it than it is. If it was innocent, what more is there to make? And even if nothing more is going on, I'm not okay with what I've seen. I'm not okay with him rubbing my unborn child in my home without me there. I know it's her body and her choice, but I'm not okay with this. It'd be one thing to feel the baby kick, but he was sitting reclined, comfortably on our sofa, rubbing lotion on her with both leaned into their private conversation. I'm trying really hard to figure out how to express the fact I don't believe her story without causing stress that it'd be dangerous for her or our baby. I don't want to pick a fight with her at this stage of her pregnancy, but at the same time my mind is spinning and I'm not cool with what happened. Any advice would be appreciated. TLDR, caught neighbor rubbing wife's belly with lotion. Circumstances make me think something is up, and I'm not happy. Some relevant comments. Everyone has a different idea of if, how it's okay to touch a pregnant woman's stomach but all that aside. There's three clearly suspicious things here. 1. They froze when you came in. 2. She doesn't want you telling his wife. 3. When you threatened to put him out, neither one of them said whoa, WTF, that's an overreaction. Guilty consciences abound here. Even if a belly rub was the extent of it, it meant enough to them for them both to feel like they got caught doing something wrong. P.S. Was the toolbox even out? Yeah grill that dude on the toolbox. How does a couple in their late 30s not already have a toolbox? Ask his wife about that too. As this is Reddit relationship advice, we're obligated to inform you that paternity testing can now be done prenatally. That's right, you can get a paternity test done at as few as 8 weeks gestation, using only blood from your wife. It's called the NIPP or Non-Invasive Prenatal Paternity Test. You're welcome. Also, communication, counseling, blah blah blah. Good luck. I have to agree with you mate, it might be innocent, but more likely than not it's fishy. I agree with another poster, at best she's naive to the point of being moronic, which is quite hard to believe. But yeah, that whole thing is unsettling. You said it yourself in what is unfortunately a pretty good summary of why her story is hardly believable. So in the span on a day the guy goes from being a distant acquaintance of hers at best to her deciding to invite him in and let him rub her. I also find it convenient that he showed up that early, right after I went to work, very shortly after his own wife also left for work. And he's never came over asking to borrow anything of mine before. Yet 9.30ish in the morning and he urgently needs a toolbox. And her reaction when you mentioned going to your neighbor's wife. Ouch. I would go for a paternity test in any case. Might be paranoid, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. Edit. Yes I personally agree that the paternity test is definitely justified and not paranoia. I guess I wanted to be a bit more balanced but ended up diluting my message. So Yao P, please go for the test. Update. This will be my only update, and I'm only posting it due to the amount of support I've gotten as well as the numerous requests to do so. I didn't expect the response I got and I've unfortunately seen it referenced on other subreddits, so I'm choosing to confront it. Most of you are right. Congratulations. I read through all of your replies and spoke to friends and stewed for a day. My wife stuck to her story, apologized for making me uncomfortable, and assured me it wouldn't happen again. Coxsucker decided to leave a handwritten note in the mailbox specifically apologizing as well. I still didn't feel better, and the consensus was that I should speak to my neighbor's wife, who were going to call Sally, so that's what I did. Watched my neighbor leave for work, then called my MIL to come take my wife for a lunch and a girl's date so she could get out of the house. I left as usual for work, called off again and went to stay with a friend. Got a text from my wife around noon telling me she was with MIL and would be back by dinner. Went home and knocked on Sally's door. Coxsucker decided to tell Sally I kicked him out and caused a scene about not wanting either of them speaking to us anymore because I was pissed about him helping my wife. Come to find out both Sally and Coxsucker have been going over to my house while I was away busy for the past few weeks as my wife had approached her and asked if they would be willing to lend a hand with chores she could no longer do alone. Sometimes Sally went over and did small tasks, or just hung out, sometimes both, sometimes just cocksucker. Wife told her I knew and was fine with it, and that's why she was confused when her husband told her his nonsense about me being mad. She showed me where she texted my wife, has her number, not mine, to clarify and ask if she was welcome over and my wife hasn't replied, and since I don't often see Sally or socialize with them she just assumed her husband was telling the truth. She also admitted that she noticed cocksucker and my wife becoming fast friends and figured it was due to the pregnancy, 
but thought it was his way of dealing with their own inability to have kids so she wrote it off. I told her what I walked in on. I told her about the tools, which ended up being nonsense too. Came to the same conclusions. Both cried, both hugged for the first time. Both took turns denying and accepting and talking each other down. Took a walk around the block together and conspired. She planned to call cocksucker at work and say that my wife messaged her confessing to the two of them having an affair and seeing what happened. Went back to my friends. Started having major panic attacks thinking I effed up. I was about to ruin my marriage, worrying I might be wrong. Bit later and I get a call from my wife screaming at me to find a way to leave work and come home. So I go home. Coxsucker called her telling her what Sally told him. She told me I was crazy, I was a piece of crap, that she was considering leaving me, everything. Having a panic attack thinking I just ruined my entire life over nothing while also trying to calm her down for the baby's sake. Impulsively told her that if she was leaving, I'd still be requesting a DNA test. And that's when it all came down. Entire tone changed. Pleading, begging, apologizing, hyperventilating, holding me. Asking me how I found out while denying anything happened. I told her it'd be okay and asked if she'd talk to me if we went for a drive. She agreed. Took us to a parking lot and we talked. Told her if there was any chance of anything happening she needed to tell me what was happening because I already knew a lot. She'd f cocksucker a handful of times before she was pregnant. Our baby might not be ours. Cocksucker had been coming by and doing daddy duties once in a blue moon in case it's his. They haven't slept together in months. She said we could move away, that it's ours no matter what, that he had manipulated her. Admitted she lied to Sally to justify cocksucker going over for daddy duties. I asked her if she'd stay with M.I.L. for a few days while I calmed down. She agreed, took her home, packed up some stuff and dropped her off. I've cleaned out my essentials and I'm in a friend's basement. Friend called her on my behalf and told her that if the baby is mine I'll be dealing with it. If it isn't it's on her. But either way I'll be filing for divorce. My friends took my phone from me and deleted my social media. She's been calling my friends, friends told her to F off. I spoke to my boss and he's been very understanding. Last I heard from Sally, Cocksucker hadn't been home and stopped responding to her calls and texts. I have nothing left. In less than a week my life has fallen apart. The only thing keeping me here is the small chance that baby is mine. I have nothing else. I woke up today disappointed I woke up at all. I've never felt this alone, and I haven't accepted any of it yet. I'm praying for the first time in my life that I can stop feeling this way and find strength. TLDR, there's your update. For those of you who took the time to reach out, I've been reading your messages even if I didn't respond and I'm incredibly grateful, they're much needed positivity. For those of you who took the time to mock me or accuse me of lying, ask yourselves just how much you think I give a F about your approval. Value those close to you and what you have before it's gone. Relevant comments. I have nothing else. Respectfully, sir, I disagree. Here's what you have. I spoke to my boss and he's been very understanding. I don't know where you work, but where I come from, most bosses would tell me to man up and leave that crap at the door. Not everyone has an understanding boss like that, man. You've got a treasure, learn to value it. I'm in a friend's basement. Friend called her on my behalf. You've got a great friend who would share his, her home with you just because. I can guarantee to you that not everyone is like that. Also, he, she called her on your behalf. Not many friends would want to get involved in that kind of drama. He, she's an absolutely solid person. My friends took my phone from me and deleted my social media. She's been calling my friends, friends told her to F off. Now you have a small army, it might be small, but it's certainly made up of loyal elites, of friends to help you through this process. Not everyone can say the same. So, bro, you aren't alone. You don't have nothing. You still have your job. A job with an understanding boss. A good friend. Friends who take your side. You have everything a man could ever want. So chin up, my boy, and go grab that bull by its horns. Life may look like a black hole right now, but it is always darkest right before the dawn. Sorry to hear this man, I was hoping for a better outcome for you. My ex-wife did something similar, but she was effing my neighbor's uncle for a year, and then I also found out she had a previous affair beforehand and that one of my kids may not be biologically mine. 18 years together and I thought we were perfect. When it all went down I was alone, felt like my life was over, just wanted to end it all. But it's been two years now and everything is going great for me. New girlfriend, got a raise at work, credit is improving, and on and on. I still get depressed every now and then about starting over, my kids being away from me except on weekends, friends that I've lost over all of this, but every day it gets easier. Things will get better, you just need to hang in there. If you need to talk to someone who has gone through it as well feel free to message me. 
Final update. Don't know if anyone will remember my original posts, as they were deleted and I have yet to be informed of why even after messaging the mod team. Don't know if this will be deleted either. If anyone wants, they can use remove it to see the posts if they aren't visible from my profile. I'm still getting messages on a regular basis for an update, so this is the final one. Extremely long story made slightly less long. A week after my last update my soon-to-be ex-wife had our child, which I was at the hospital for. I'm the father. The first few weeks after my last update were extremely difficult, with family, friends on both sides adding to the drama. Thankfully, I've had an overwhelming amount of support from not only from the vast majority of people I know in my personal life, but from all of you as well. My wife and I agreed to sit down and discuss things after she was discharged, in my friend's basement with my friend upstairs in case I needed the support. She came over and we basically said everything we needed to say. I exploded and said a lot of mean crap, most of which I regret, some I don't. She spent the whole time apologizing and begging me to take her back and give our family a chance to survive everything that happened. Went on for about an hour like this until I accepted that there was nothing left to say and I have zero romantic love for her anymore and she accepted that we need to focus on our daughter above all else. We're agreeing to figure out a custody split amicably, and to eventually co-parent more actively together when wounds heal. But our marriage is over. She has the potential to be a wonderful mother, but she failed me as a wife, and my sole focus right now is how to get myself mentally to where I need to be to be the best father possible. We plan to eventually sell the home, but right now I'm staying in an apartment. Sally is leaving cocksucker. He's apparently staying with his mother and still refused to speak to Sally directly. According to her, the last thing that was passed along to her is that he understands what he did. He's sorry he hurt her. He loves her and won't contest a divorce. She's struggling to handle everything and lacks a support system, so we're developing a friendship. Mostly two wounded people leaning on each other, and I'm doing my best. She plans to start therapy too. And no, I don't plan to be anything more than platonic friends with Sally. Lovely woman, but no. I still haven't fully processed my new role as a parent. I think mentally I already convinced myself my child wouldn't be mine in case it ended up that way. I plan to take classes and spend more time with my daughter doing early bonding. I'm terrified but very happy. I know there's a lot left to do, and a lot of hurting left to go through, but I'm stable, and a dad. That's what matters most. TLDR, leaving wife, moved out, I'm a new dad, lots of learning and healing left to do, but cautiously as optimistic as I can be. Some comments, I was honestly rooting for the child to be cocksuckers. It would've hurt more at first but you'd be able to disassociate everything from your soon-to-be ex-wife after you sign the papers. Sadly, you're stuck to her for at least 18 years and will have to be cordial with her for the rest of your life. You did the right thing divorcing her. She does deserve to live in happiness with a happy family and life. The same for cocksucker. I remember your posts and honestly wondered what had happened. Congrats on becoming a new dad. It's one of the most rewarding and enriching experiences that you'll ever have. But will only be doing it part-time will suck but she won't know any different. Just that as she grows up she'll in all likelihood end up having two families who love her, instead of just one. Good to hear your split is going to be amicable, and that you are both understanding that it's over. Hope your ex-wife learns from the experience but tbh, that's no longer your concern. Co-parenting with her will be tough, especially if you both end up finding new partners, but that is a bridge you can cross when you get to it. For now though, learn all you can about being a father to a baby, then learn how to be the best father you can be. You have a long and rewarding life ahead of you so don't let everything that happened with your ex cloud your life. That storm is in the rear now. Support your friend. Lean on each other if you need. Lean on family and friends when you need. But overall just look after yourself, your daughter and take care. As far as co-parenting, it may be worth looking at also co-sharing the house and swapping places as your daughter grows up. Many people do this with 50 over 50 splits for your kids. They maintain a stable environment with mom and dad swapping roles week on and week off. One leaves and stays in the apartment whilst the other goes home, then rinse and repeat. Give it a thought if you like. Anyway, good luck to you but it sounds like you are working on getting to that place you need to be. You'll be a great father to your daughter, and a great father to any kids you have with a future partner. You got this and you are doing well. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you really like our videos, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Have a good day.